Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how I put together my new table saw outfeed table. It's got a T-Track top, a bunch of storage, and it's all built into a Rockler Material Mate panel cart. This project started as a result of my new table saw. I suddenly found myself in need of an outfeed table, but I didn't want to just throw something together. I wanted to think it through first. For about a month, I just had my Rockler panel cart sitting behind the saw, and I found that it was the right height to catch work pieces after I added a scrap of plywood to the top of it. I decided this was going to be the foundation for my more permanent table, but I wanted to come up with some kind of storage to build into it and make better use of that empty space. I pondered on a design for a while, and in the process, I went to Rockler's website to try and find some dimensions for the cart so I could build off of that. Lucky for me, they already had thought of this idea and had free plans for a storage cabinet that made efficient use of the space I was trying to fill. If you want to build the same cabinet, there's a link to Rockler's plans in the description. I started out by breaking down a full sheet of plywood with a circular saw, then moved to the table saw to cut the pieces to their final dimensions. The design called for a few dados in the vertical support pieces, so I cut a spacer the exact height of the lower dado, made it flush with the bottom of the piece I was cutting into, and clamped it firmly in place. I took another piece of plywood and set it on end against the spacer, then I sandwiched a third piece on the other side of that and clamped it down. This created a channel the exact width of the material that I'm building with. Now I could set the depth on a pattern router bit, then let the bearing ride along the walls of that channel to create a dado. You could do this more easily in a single pass by using a 3 quarter inch router bit, but since 3 quarter inch material is rarely actually 3 quarters of an inch, this might result in a sloppy joint. I used a 9 16 bit, and after one pass down and back, I have a date of the exact size of the material I'm using. I drilled holes through the inside of the dado so I could get the position right without any measuring later on. Then I flipped the pieces over and countersunk the holes from the outside. Assembly of the cabinet body was pretty straightforward. I just put the pieces together like a puzzle, making sure the front edges were flush with each other. It was helpful to have the dado so tight because it held everything together during this step without any screws or clamps. I was planning on this just being a dry fit to make sure everything was right, then I would take it apart and glue all the joints before putting it together for the last time. But once I reached this point, I didn't feel like taking it apart again. It's not going to hold much weight or be under any stress, so I figured the screws would hold it together well enough. I set the cabinet body on top of the base and made sure it was centered, then traced around the inside to map out its location. This way, I would know where to pre-drill holes again. With the cabinet still in this position, I started to assemble the little cubbies on the backside. I drilled a few pocket holes in the ends of the side pieces so I could join them to the body of the cabinet. I clamped a scrap to the side of the cabinet to make a stopping block that would hold the side pieces flush to the outside face. Then I proceeded to attach the cubby assembly to the cabinet body. The long piece was slightly bowed, so I used a clamp to pull it in line, then ran in some screws from the back side. I attached the bottom while the cabinet was on its face so that the fronts of the base and the cabinet would be flush by referencing off my workbench. Then I drilled in a bunch of screws to lock everything together. The drawers called for a dado cut near the bottom of every panel, so I put a quarter inch bit in the router and then set the cutting depth to one quarter as well. I ran all the pieces through the table, pushing them through with a piece of scrap on the back side to prevent tear out. So I've got all the dados cut into the bottom edge of all the drawer pieces, and they are exactly a quarter inch wide and a quarter inch deep. And our drawer bottoms are exactly a quarter inch thick. And that means when I go to put it together, it's a really, really tight fit. It's more of a tight fit than it ought to be because there's really not much material here to work with. And if I force it in there, there's a good chance it's actually going to snap this lip off. And we don't want that. So I've seen this technique done before where you take a hand plane and you just shave off the edge of that until it fits in there a little bit with just a little bit of wiggle room so it's not going to snap that off. And there's other ways to shave off that edge. But since I'm not very experienced with hand planes, I figured this is going to be a good opportunity to learn a little bit. So we'll try this out. Are you 
I use these corner clamping jigs to put the drawers together because they help keep the parts square and hold them up, acting a bit like a third hand. After spreading glue on the end and clamping it in place, I shot a few brad nails in through the back. After doing the same thing on the opposite side, I slid the drawer bottom into the dados. Then I put the front on and secured it with a few more brads on each side. It may be a good idea to come back and put a few more screws in here as well to add more strength, but since these are small drawers and they won't be holding a lot of weight, I figured I wouldn't bother unless they start coming apart sometime down the line. I used the biggest Forstner bit I had to cut a hole into the top edge of the drawer fronts to create a drawer pull. This would have been easier before assembling the drawer, but it still worked. I've done a few videos in the past about how I install drawer slides, so instead of rehashing that here, I'll leave a link in the description of those videos in case you're looking for an explanation. The plans call for a three-quarter square strip of plywood to act as a lip for the large cubbies. I had a three-quarter square strip of walnut ready to go, so I just cut it to length and glued it in place instead. I put wood glue on the strips, but left a few gaps so I could add a few drops of CA glue. Then, I put accelerator on the opposite face before setting the strips in place. This way, the CA glue dries instantly and holds the strip while the wood glue continues to dry a bit more slowly. Well, this little cabinet makes much better use of the space underneath the Material Mate cart. Before, it was just sort of open air that was otherwise wasted square footage in this shop, but this cabinet, now I've got a couple of drawers, a shelf on top, and a couple of cubbies, and then those little storage things in the back. Now, the other thing about it is it's designed so that you can still use the tipping feature on the cart. So now you can still put it that way and haul your sheet goods in the cradle like you were intended to. So now that I've got the storage all taken care of, I've got to do something better with the top of this. These are just old junky cabinet doors that I've been using to push goods across the table saw and onto this, but I can do a lot better. So first of all, let me say a huge thank you to Rockler for helping me out with this because not only did they design the perfect cabinet to go inside their cart, but once I started thinking about what I needed for the top, I thought it doesn't just have to support sheet goods. It can be another work surface. So I started thinking about T-tracks. And now I'm going to go ahead and install a Rockler T-track tabletop to the top. And that way it's going to have all sorts of different uses because there's so many T-track accessories out there. It would be really easy to just put a top on this thing and run some screws up through the bottom to hold it in place. But I wanted to be able to remove it quickly in case I needed to use it to manhandle some sheet goods. So, I started by positioning the top where I wanted it, then tracing the frame underneath. After flipping it over, you can see exactly where it sits on the frame. I drilled a hole into a piece of scrap and dropped in a big rare earth magnet to check the depth. Allowing a little room for epoxy, it looks just right, so I put the bit back in the hole and drew a line around it to use as a depth stop gauge. I drilled matching holes in all four corners on the underside of the tabletop. Then, I mixed some epoxy and spread it into the holes before dropping in the magnets. I put a flat board on top and pressed down to help seat the magnet in the epoxy and make it flush with the surface. After the epoxy hardened, I flipped the top back over and set it in place on the frame. I may end up gluing a few strips to the underside of it to make it easier to get it back into position. While testing the strength of using just these four magnets, I found that I could slide it without much effort, but it took a lot to lift it straight up. I might have to add more magnets later on, but we'll see when we get there. The last step is to cut a few dados into the top that will line up exactly with the miter slots in the table saw. That way, if I use a miter gauge or a sled of some sort, the runners will slide into negative space and not into the side of the tabletop. After positioning the table where I wanted it and using a straight edge to make some reference lines, I was ready to cut dados using the same method as I did with the cabinet body. I removed some of the T-track sections so I wouldn't try to run through them with the router. And I actually used some of the T-track hold down clamps to lock my reference pieces in place. For these dados, I wasn't trying to fit an exact size. They just needed to be larger than the miter slots on the table saw. And I made them quite a bit larger so I didn't have to be so precise when I was rolling the cart in and out of position. The core of this tabletop is MDF, which makes for some nasty fine dust. I made sure to wear a respirator while I was working on this and I vacuumed up as much of it as I could right away. I used my radial arm saw to cut the two small sections out of the T-track that the slots would be passing through. 
Aluminum is soft enough that you can use a carbide tipped blade to cut through it. Then I dropped the rail sections back in the table and screwed them down. Well that about wraps this one up. I think this is going to be a really handy little station for me. I took this material mate cart that pretty much had a bunch of empty square footage underneath it that wasn't used and turned it into some great storage. I've got all these T-Track things that are going to store in this side and then I think I'm going to put most of my router bits and stuff on the other side since the router table is right over here. There's a couple other cubbies and a shelf on top and then there's that storage on the back. So I think this is going to work out really well. Then instead of just having that ugly old cabinet top on there, it's a very modular, very useful outfeed table that's now a T-Track tabletop. And I've got all these little gadgets and gadgets that help hold things in place. Big hold down clamps, little hold down clamps, cam over type hold down clamps. Um, lots of handy little things there. I think they're going to come in real handy. Uh, and then I've got an outfeed table, which is just a little bit below the surface of the table saw. So that's going to work really well. Um, I don't think I quite cut the grooves in the outfeed table low enough because that just barely clears it. Uh, so I might have to get the router back out and deepen those channels just a little bit, but we'll live with it for now and see how that goes. And then last but not least, with the magnets that I put underneath it, you can still use this thing for its original intended purpose as the material mate cart uh, that is getting plywood out of the back of a truck, through a doorway, onto a table saw, onto some sawhorses. Um, it's really handy for that too, and because I use the magnets, I can just take this top, kind of slide it a little bit, and lift it off, and then it's back to being its original cart. And because of the shape of this cabinet, all I have to do is pull that lever and the back side of it isn't even in the way. And now you can haul your sheet goods at an angle like this and get it through narrow doorways and whatnot. So uh, I put four one inch by eighth inch thick rare earth magnets in the corners underneath this thing. And I think that's going to be enough. It's not like I'm going to have a lot of sideways pressure on this thing. It takes a lot to lift it straight up. It doesn't take too much to slide it, but I don't know that I'm going to do that that much. Now, if I find that it's going to be a problem, I'll come back and add more magnets later. Now in the Rockler plans, they actually have these corners rounded over just a little bit, I think to keep you from, you know, catching your knees on them and stuff like that. Uh, but I left them square because I think I'm going to fancy this thing up a little bit. I think I'm going to cut some really thin strips of walnut and make my own edge banding and just kind of give it little walnut accents all the way around where you can see the plies. And then I'm going to put some walnut faces on these drawers just, just because I can. And that's really about it. So thanks again to Rockler for helping me out with this for some of the supplies and some inspiration and just the support throughout this project. Uh, thank you all for watching this video and if you haven't yet please go ahead and hit subscribe because I'm going to have more stuff coming up. Uh, one more thing, I've got t-shirts for sale and there's going to be a link down in the description if you have any interest in those. And if you guys like what I'm doing, please go check out my Patreon page as well. I've got a couple of different perks over there for people who want to help contribute a dollar here or there. And every little bit helps me buy materials, helps me buy new equipment, helps me get the job done. So to all of my current patrons, thank you very much. And to anybody else who wants to help me continue to grow and expand, please head on over. There's a link down in the description for that. All right, that's enough of the sales pitch. I hope you like the project and thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.